is a very important week for South Africa because on Friday, we and the rest of the world will pause to remember Nelson Mandela as we commemorate the first anniversary of his passing. In true South African style, we will do so with a unique mix of sadness and celebration, of grief and of gratitude. As we move further away from the life of Nelson Mandela, it is too easy to start remembering him in familiar sound bites, to reduce the image of Madiba in our minds to a handful of quotes and pictures, we begin to replace the real values he stood for with a two-dimensional feel-good version of him that makes us feel nostalgic, but not necessarily inspired. In doing so, we risk forgetting the real value of his contribution to the birth of our democracy. If we truly want to honor his legacy, we have to remain inspired by the values that drove him. The Nelson Mandela we're probably most familiar with is our Madiba of the early 1990s. The forgiver, the unifier, the leader, the man who could convince people who had lived all their lives as strangers and enemies to lay down their hate, their suspicion, their fear, and replace these with trust, with hope, and with common ground. But that is not the Nelson Mandela I want to speak about today. I'd like to go back more than a quarter of a century earlier to the Mandela we saw in the Pretoria Supreme Court on the 20th of April, 1964. The Mandela who stood up calm and confident and delivered a brutal indictment of an unjust regime knowing full well that this regime could respond by sending him to his death. Standing as a prisoner in the dock in a trial meticulously staged managed to incriminate and vilify him, he did not flinch as he dismantled everything apartheid stood for and anything that his accusers could throw at him. It was a true state of the nation address, spelling out precisely what was wrong in South Africa and what it would take to fix his beloved country. Of course, the momentous global events of intervening years have changed some of the political assumptions of the time, but this speech remains timeless and appropriately propelled Nelson Mandela to global recognition. This is the Madiba I'd like to turn to today. Because within the text of this seminal speech, we can identify some of the values that guided him then and three decades later found their way into our constitution. The first is fairness and justice. The struggle, he said, was about everyone getting a fair deal, a stake in society, and the chance to work for a better future. The second value we find in his speech is that of service. Service to both his country and its citizens. Little could he have known, as a young man in the rural Eastern Cape, just how important his service would one day be, not only to his people and his country, but to humanity. The third value is dignity. Both his concern for the dignity of the people he was representing and his own dignity in standing up to his accusers and oppressors in court. The fourth value that radiates from his speech is non-racialism. He never transferred the evil of apartheid into a hatred there are many famous passages in the speech, but the one that for me reflects his generosity of spirit the most comes near the end when he addresses his white compatriots. He says, it is not true 
that the enfranchisement of all will result in racial domination. Political division based on color is entirely artificial. And when it disappears, so will the domination of one color group by another. His definition of freedom is contained in the speech's most famous passage. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. In 1994, there was little doubt that the more than 12 million people who voted on that first Freedom Day for the African National Congress did so because the party symbolized the values espoused by Nelson Mandela in the dock and exemplified by his life. 20 years on, we must now take a closer look at where we are today, measured against the values about which I have spoken. What is fair about a political system built on patronage, where positions, jobs, and contracts are the outcome not of effort, ability, hard work, and service, but rewards for protecting the privileges of the powerful, no matter how corrupt they may be? What is fair about a system called black economic empowerment becoming a mere fig leaf to benefit a politically connected few while thousands are shut out of a shrinking economy? And what about service? Today, we have allowed public service to become a source of private wealth generation. For many South Africans, dignity is still a distant dream. And finally, there is non-racialism. Rather than confront the reality of leadership failure, our leaders seek scapegoats and diversions. Accusing a person of racism in South Africa is the gravest of indictments given the tragedy of our past. Although racists and race cards are still far too prevalent in our society, I have no doubt that they are vastly outnumbered by the South Africans who do indeed share the values of Nelson Mandela and wish to live up to them. But we are not going to wait around for the inevitable implosion of the governing party either, and they're well on the way towards that. We're already building a new majority, a strong nucleus towards which those who share our values and the values of Nelson Mandela are increasingly attracted and through which the enormous potential of all South Africans will be released. If you want to know whether a democracy is maturing, you need only look at why its citizens choose who they vote for at the ballot box. People are turning their backs on leaders who create an inner circle defined by bling culture, the antithesis of what Mandela stood for. Instead, they are looking for ways that will include everyone in a growing economy that offers real opportunities for all. They are looking for leaders whose values once more resonate with their own. They are looking for a South Africa in which a capable state bound by the rule of law and the constitution strives to ensure dignity, opportunity, fairness and inclusion for all its citizens. These people will find that home in the Democratic Alliance. The only party where we truly try to live Madiba's values. Many others have their eyes set on a similar direction and destination and are heading in the same way as we are. Initially, we don't always see each other as we walk separately on parallel paths. But once we realize that we're on the same road, that we share common values and a common destination, 
We can join hands and join forces, and our numbers will keep growing as they have in every single election since 1994. We are working hard and taking steps towards achieving it, despite the limitations of having only provincial and municipal power. Although we are very clear about what we stand for, we have not always done enough to tell people exactly who we are and what we believe in. In the process, we have left the door open for others to define the DA and in the process to misrepresent us. But as we continue to communicate our vision, we will offer the alternative that so many people are looking for. On the first anniversary of his death, we make this commitment. We will rebuild your legacy, Nelson Mandela. Ungan dinwa nangomso. Muni mora muhna rakni. Dale baya harda verk fur. Sinom se benzi omkulu. Diabulela talmakasi. Baya Danki, thank you very much. May God bless you all.